I'm gonna show you three different ways you can use an automotive relay to control your custom lights or anything electronic automotive. Let's dive in. Okay, number one, we are going to use this to simply send power to something. We're gonna flip a switch or push a button that will trigger this relay and it will send power off to that thing that we want to turn on. The second way we are going to use a relay today is to kill power to something. So we'll have power going in this and then straight back out to something like the parking lights on our headlights. We're gonna to wanna to kill those lights as soon as we trigger this thing. So for example, with my GTR builds, I give them RGB where they start changing colors. But if the white running light's on, you can't even see it because that running light's just too freaking bright. So we're gonna use this as a kill switch to turn off that white LED so we can enjoy our nice custom RGB. Third way we're gonna use this thing is to send ground to something. So sometimes you have a product that it only turns on when it gets a ground signal, but otherwise it is not operating. So we're gonna use this thing to power up some white RGB LEDs, they get their signal from ground when they want to turn on. So we're gonna use this three different ways. Let's dive in with the first way, which is how to wire this thing super basic to send power. All right, if we look super close on here, we can see that there's certain numbers next to each one of these pins. And this little lower one right here, it says 30. The one on the left says 86. The one on the right here says 85. And then we have 87 up top and 87 a right here in the very middle. So refer back to that as I go through some of this stuff because it'll go kind of quick. If we're talking about sending power, that means that we need to have power going from the battery straight to pin 30 here. Now typically that means that you should have a fuse, an inline fuse in between the battery and your relay and that should probably be only about six inches away from the battery where you have that fuse. That way if anything bad happens on that relay, it's gonna pop the fuse and then you could just swap that fuse later so nothing is damaged. It's just the safest way to wire it. If you're gonna be tapping this thing into an existing fuse box or something like that, you can use something, there's different sizes of this. This is called an add a fuse, and it basically just pushes into the place of one of the existing fuses, and then you can take that original fuse that was in there, plug it back in, and now you've got this extra connection you can throw any size fuse that you want back into this thing and that's gonna protect the circuit and piggyback onto what's already there. Sometimes that's a good idea, sometimes it's better to just go straight to the battery. So if you're gonna run like a hardcore light bar or something like that, you're gonna to wanna to go straight to the battery probably instead of using any sort of existing circuit that's on there just because it's not made to have that much pull coming from it. So out of fuses are handy if you're gonna be doing something like maybe inside the car and you wanna put a little switch, have everything on a relay, super safe and secure, just something to think about. Okay, let's talk about the relay. I was looking at these relays that already have like the little push on pigtail that has the wires coming out. They're basically just these. I saw some of those things that were like 24 bucks and I'm like, my God, why wouldn't you just take a couple of these, crimp them to a wire, and now you have something like this, power and ground supplied directly to the relay. Now, like I said, you'd probably have a fuse on that red wire right there, but for the sake of right now, I'm gonna plug these things in and I'll talk about what to do next. Pin 30 here, that's gonna be our power wire. It's gonna get its power directly from the battery and then we're gonna ground that thing, the relay itself, at the battery as well, which is going to be pin 85. So if you're looking at this thing, the bottom middle pin is gonna be power and then the pin to the right of that is going to be your ground. That leaves us with the outputs, which are gonna be the middle and the top, as well as the trigger that's gonna make this thing do what it does. It's gonna click when this thing gets power right here. I'll demonstrate that right now. All right, so let's hook up ground. We're gonna hook up power. And then all I'm gonna do is tap power to that little trigger. A, and it's clicking. So what it's doing is it's going from power coming in the bottom here and then straight back out through that little middle pin. And then it's alternating when I click this. Now that middle pin stops sending power and this top pin begins sending power. So right now nothing's coming out of that, but now 12 volts coming out of that. So what we're gonna wanna do is run a wire from this top pin, which is 87, and it's going to alternate from sending power out through 87A to sending it through 87. Okay, so now we've got our power coming in through 30. It's coming out through 87 only when power and ground are connected to 
the battery or to wherever coming into this relay. And then this yellow wire also gets power. That's going to trigger this to switch from 87A in the center there out to 87 on the top through this white wire. So let's hook something up to this now and show that. All right, here's one of my 7443 LED bulbs for the Nissan GTR. And what I'm going to do is it's just gonna get hooked up to this little relay setup. I have my ground hooked up to the bottom of the bulb and going to the relay. I have my power going to the relay. Power's not going to anything else. We can see that one of our connections to the bulb for power is not hooked up to anything. And then the other leg is hooked up here to pin 87 on the relay. If I now take our trigger wire and I touch that to power, then the relay is gonna send power from pin 30 out to pin 87 and down here, which also means that right now, even though nothing is telling it to do it, anything, pin 87A in the center. If I just connect this here, then it's automatically going to be passing the power from pin 30 straight back out through pin 87A. And if I, again, trigger this relay, it's going to change the power from going out 87A to now 87. Kind of a little preview on how our kill switch is gonna work. What you're normally gonna have is a setup like this. And then this wire, which would be our trigger, is gonna go to something like a little remote control switch. When you hit the button, it's gonna power up this little yellow wire here. And then that would turn on whatever it is that we want, big light bar, whatever. You can add a fifth wire to one of these five pin relays. And now you can make use of our second wire that's not currently doing anything. And now check it out. What we're gonna have instead of just on and off is you're gonna have the parking light mode of this bulb. And now when we hit the turn signal to use as a trigger, it's just gonna alternate. So you can use something like this where it's only getting powered up ever by the parking light, but then when you hit the turn signal, you've got both modes. The only thing that would not work on that circuit would be if you wanted it to get power from only the turn signal while the running lights are not on. That system would not work because you need something to power up this relay so that it has some power to send when it gets that trigger. So if you wanna use type one, you're gonna power things up that normally only need to ever turn on if you flip a switch or you push a button or let's say you like turn the headlight dial. You could also use something like that to tap into the low beam circuit on a car because you know that every time you turn on the low beams, you want some other lights to turn on such as fog lights or whatever. If your car didn't come with fog lights, this is exactly how you would make the fog lights come on with the low beams every single time is you could just tap into the low beam wire with the trigger wire. So that means that anytime you turn that headlight on or they automatically kick on at night, that trigger is going to see voltage to turn whatever on. The other way that you could do that is to tap into the parking lights so that you could actually have the parking lights and the headlight on as well as your fog lights kick on before the low beams ever do. You just won't be able to turn off your fog lights. <laughs> In which case, maybe you should just consider having a little remote control for your fog lights or a switch on the dash as well, like you would typically have on a car that came with them. Number two, this is gonna be a kill circuit. Okay, so here is a very simple wire harness that I put together for one of my GTR customers that wants to have his bright white lightning bolts turn off only when he turns on the Bluetooth remote control for his color changing lightning bolts. So we did exactly what I had said before where we just used 87A there in the middle to power up his parking lights. Now that means that as soon as he pushes that button to turn on the cool color changing stuff, it kills power to the parking lights. It turns off those white lightning bolts and only the RGB lightning bolts can be seen while that remote is active. If you turn it off now, it gives power and it lets 87A get voltage again to send to the white lightning bolts. So a kill circuit is almost the exact same thing as setup number one, with the exception that when it gets triggered, it turns power off to something. So for this third type of relay, the only difference is instead of putting power into pin 30, we're gonna add a ground wire and then we're also gonna ground it at the same place that we did on type one and two as well. So where ground is coming in at 30, it's coming straight back out through pin 87A, and anytime this is triggered, it's gonna switch to pin 87. Ground will come out from there. So now we're gonna talk about throwing ground. This is a pretty interesting situation. I've got here the very end of an RGBW Demon Eye driver setup. So that means we've got a power wire here at the end, which is a black wire, and then we've got green, red, blue, and a white wire, which are all ground wires. We could test that really simple. If I hook up a power wire to this little dude here, and then to that little guy there, we've got white, we've got blue, got green and red, boom, got it. Okay, 
but so that you don't have to mess with all of that, oftentimes you just have something like a little RGB remote, which this one came compliments of my boy Jay. I'm gonna turn this thing on now, power up my demon eyes. Now the cool thing is about these demon eyes that they have the ability to do white only because they have a dedicated white chip inside of them. But here's where it gets weird. I'm never gonna use that. I don't ever want them to be white because those things I'm gonna use to power up something that I only ever want to be either red, green, or blue, which means that this little white wire right here, I could basically, I could just kill that off. I literally, I don't need it whatsoever. So instead of having this cool little JST connector, which truthfully I kind of hate if you've watched any of my other videos, uh, I'm just gonna cut all of that off. Get that gone. Out. Let's power this thing up individually. Again, trim the shielding off. So now we've got our RGBW wire. I'm gonna strip the ends, turn it back on, and then we're gonna talk about how we can use this relay. All right, so again, we're gonna give it power at the black wire. And now this time it's cool, we can select just one color. And very often times, as I've talked about in many, many videos, we have the green wire hooked up, but the red LEDs are on. Well, as silly as that is, it doesn't really matter for this. All that matters is that when we turn on this white one, we get this white LED. Now, why would I mess with a perfectly good Bluetooth connection that had RGBW on there? Because it's not the controller I wanna use. I wanna use one that only does RGB. So this is my absolute favorite Bluetooth controller and it only has four wires. It's got a black wire, it's got a green one, a red one, and a blue one but it has no white wire, which means that if I have any RGB products that actually have a W as well, a dedicated white chip, then I don't get to use it at all, unless, unless I use something that can send ground to this white wire as well as power to this black wire. And to do that, I need at least one relay to send ground. And I said at least one relay because I have one relay that is going to send ground down this white wire and then it's gonna connect with my other RGB stuff, which I'll turn on and show you in a second. But because the thing that I'm powering up is an RGB product and it doesn't always have power going to it, I don't wanna have power back feeding into my RGB controller. So I'm using this second relay here to actually send power directly from the parking lights right out to that power wire in my RGB setup. Now, if I just wanna have one relay hooked up to throw ground to that one white wire, I could do that, but it's only ever going to work if the RGB controller is already on sending power down that black wire. So in this case, I actually have a second relay that I set up so that as soon as the parking lights come on on my buddy's Dodge Charger, it's gonna send that power straight from pin 30 right out to 87A like we talked about earlier, and that's gonna power up that black wire on the RGB circuit for his DRLs, for the little LEDs from Diode Dynamics that are powering up the DRLs on his Dodge Charger headlights. But we want those things to lose power as soon as we trigger that first relay so that we can turn on the RGB stuff and now they will get power down the black wire from the controller. It's very complicated because we have two different relays and they're doing two of the things that we've talked about. Number one, we're using basically a kill circuit, but number two, we are using the second relay to throw ground. That is a workaround now. There's also a module that I've seen from Lighting Trends that apparently does all of this stuff, way less complicated, but you can build all of this stuff yourself. This is only a few dollars worth of parts, and if you know how and why you're doing what you're doing, you can make it happen as well. Let me show you what this thing does and then we'll talk about exactly how I made the two relays work together. Normally how we would want to do this is we would have the relay getting its power from something like the DRL circuit. It'd be coming into the relay and then it would be coming straight out through 85A to power up that thing automatically. And then when we trigger this guy, it will kill power to that. But we're gonna make it even more complicated by adding a second relay in because instead of sending power out to a wire that we want to turn something on, we actually have to send ground to something that we want to turn on. In this case, the white LEDs from the Diode Dynamics RGBW DRLs. So many acronyms. So relay one is gonna get its power from the DRL circuit going up through pin 30 and out through 85A. That's gonna go over to the trigger wire on our second relay. 
that is now going to, instead of send power, it's going to send ground because we have ground coming in at pin 30 and at 85. And so ground is going to leave once this thing gets triggered by relay one, it's going to send ground from 87 out to the W wire on our Dodge Charger DRL kit because otherwise it's never going to ever get used. That white wire does not work because we're using XK Chrome. And then to make this even more complicated, anytime relay one gets triggered, it's gonna kill power to the DRL circuit because we want that white LED to turn off, which will then allow the RGB coming from our XK Chrome to be completely powered separately. Now there's only one little way that we needed to do that so that we don't have two different power sources competing or backfeeding into any of these components. And to do that, we just used a pair of diodes. So that's a directional little component that only lets electricity go one way. So we have a diode on the DRL wire and we have a diode on the XK Chrome power going down that same black wire. So it's just gonna alternate whether it's getting it from the DRL circuit or it's getting from the XK Chrome our relay setup here does not allow both of those things to be powering that circuit at the same time. It's one or the other. I have to wrap up the rest of this wiring for my dude. And I didn't want to do that before I made this video because I knew, I knew that this solution could help you. This is about as dim as I can make it because those things are super bright. Now, when I push the A button on this remote control, all that it did was it interrupted our relay. So you can hear it clicking. You can see the little blue signal on the remote control box. And then you can tell that it is interrupting that white DRL, which is a ground wire coming off the second relay. And it is sending power down the XK Chrome to the black wire on the RGB stuff headed to these individual parts. Now, when I click this, now the black wire is getting its power from the first relay which is the 87A. I kept saying 85A, my bad. We got ground going to that white wire, but to get power going down the black wire on that RGBW setup, the way that we do that is we have our power coming into relay number one, and then it's going straight back out through 85A, which triggers relay two. But what it's also doing is it's sending power down that black wire. So we put a diode on there. So power can only go from 85A down into that black wire. At the same time that we power up the XK Chrome, we need it to send power down that black wire also. So we have a second diode. So we basically have power coming from XK Chrome or power coming from 85A on our first relay. Both of those cannot happen at the same time because 85A only is on while the XK Chrome is off. As soon as we push the button on the remote control, the XK Chrome unit gets power, which automatically kills power to 85A. Are you, are you actually following this? If you caught any of that, if any of that made sense and you're gonna be able to use advanced relay kill circuits or anything like that, just say, yes, this actually helped me down in the comments below. I really wanna keep bringing you crazy value. I just wanna make sure that I'm not making it too crazy for you. If this belongs only in my online course, let me know. I am adding it to RGB wiring, which is one of the paid classes that guys that want to do this stuff is kind of a money-making thing instead of just solving the problems for their own personal car like we've done here for my boy Darren Ottman. I just want to bring you the value. If this is too much, just tell me, bro, you lost me. Say, <laughs> if I lost you, just say that in the comments below, which makes a lot of sense because this was pretty crazy out there stuff. If you want me to keep bringing the crazy value like this on these long-winded, silly, complicated videos, just tell me that as well below in the description. Wow.